So we're out here at Ben River Farms. These are our mobile chicken coops. These are called a chick shop. They're designed by Justin Rhodes. And they're a pretty easy to move, cheap to build mobile chicken coop. We have 100 birds. We built four of them. We're gonna put 25 in each coop. They've got all the bells and whistles. It's really a luxury coop for what most people would consider to be a chicken coop. Lid lifts open, nesting boxes in the back. There's a bar that we can close the nesting boxes at night as a swivel. We keep a dust bath in every one of them so that they can clean themselves off, stay free of mites. It's just a mix of sand, dirt, wood ash from a wood burning stove. You can put diatomaceous earth in there. We give them free access to oyster shell all they want, keep their calcium up, has a bit of grit in there so they can digest their food. Each coop has one. Their, the door, the front door acts as a ramp for them to go up. We've numbered all of our chicken coops so that we can collect data a little better. Um, chicken coop one is in this area. Chicken coop two needs a new wheel. We can better communicate and track what we're doing with each chicken coop which helps us to collect metrics for pasturing our land properly, the amount of feed we're using, and if there happen to be any issues or repairs that need to be made, that's why we've numbered them. On the back here, we have a kickstand. And this is a modification that we made to the plants. The kickstand that came with, that is designed with it, is a hinge with a little piece of wood it's not that great of a design. So we've taken a piece of EMT and a little latch there and we can turn it up when we're moving it. There's a few holes here that we can adjust at different heights depending where the coop is. But when we lift that up, we can close this here door and we can move it. These are designed to be easily moved by hand, ergonomical. We've come up with some simple solutions that if we're tired at the end of the day, that we can wrap a strap around that front bar and move it with our uh, John Deere Gator. But most of the time we'll move it by hand. They're low compaction, they don't use fossil fuels. These are designed to put about 39 birds in there. We're going to put 25, give them a little more room. Um, they tend to be a little happier, have a little more temperament uh, when they uh, have more room. The nice thing about these chicken coops is none of the materials that we used for them are hard to get or expensive. So any of this stuff we can get at the hardware store. If something breaks, it's easy to fix it. It's easy to get. Um, and we're pretty happy with them. We've made just minor modifications to the design. Otherwise, the design that we got offline from Justin Rhodes is pretty spot on, pretty well thought out. We really like them. We'll probably make some uh, adjustments to these nesting boxes in the long term. They use a milk crate that we've cut the front out of the milk crate. And then we put our nesting material in there. They slide in and out easily so you can access your eggs. We'll, in the long term, probably redesign these to be a rolling nest box to keep the eggs a little bit cleaner. We're really excited about that. These are a Rhode Island Red and White Leghorn hybrid. So they're a really good layer, winter layer, hardy birds. These are pullets, but they're just on the cusp of starting to lay. So I'd imagine they'll probably start laying here in a couple weeks. And when they're in full production, 100 birds can give us right around 40 dozen eggs a week, which is pretty good. It's a good start anyway. Um, and we'll ramp that up. Uh, more than likely next year, we'll get a rooster and we'll actually start to grow fertile eggs so we can raise some of our own chicks and a brooder and uh, do our next round of chickens in-house. 
It took us roughly five days to build these coops. A day and some change on each one of them. Required a little bit of tuning in. They all have their little quirks. They're all a little different, but they're pretty much identical. Um, we're pretty satisfied with the results. One of the waterers has apple cider vinegar and garlic in it. This helps provide them with some probiotics, antimicrobial properties, keeps them from getting sick. It's a more of a preventative thing to keep them healthy and make sure that they're getting the probiotics to keep their gut health in order. And the garlic will help to ward off any diseases that they might get. So we give them this. This one's marked with the X so that we know that this one has the apple cider vinegar and the garlic in it. That water is just normal water. You want to give them the option of one or the other so that they can choose to come get this water or choose to go get regular water. But generally, what we'll do over the next couple days is we'll store the water up here on this pallet. And that will, the pallet not only gives them a shade structure to hang out underneath, it, they knock their feet off when they jump up here and it keeps the water cleaner. So it's better for their health. You don't have to change the water as often. And it's also dual purpose shade structure and it's keeping their feet clean so around here on the farm we're constantly looking for things like that how can we stack functions how can we get multiple functions out of one thing so that we are working efficiently and getting the most out of our infrastructure and each piece of the farm these four mobile coops are in about a half an acre of premier one fencing right now that's the top of the line electric fencing that's used for pasturing birds. Um, we really like it a lot, it works quite well. So the idea with these is they won't remain in this same spot forever. We'll leave them here for roughly a week, move the fence, move all of the coops, move them different spots around the farm. So we're stacking functions, we're coming full circle with permaculture concepts here because not only are they giving us eggs, they're fertilizing the land, they're keeping the pests down, and they're also our garbage disposal for all of our farm waste, our extra fruit, our vegetable scraps. And we're utilizing them for many different things. Eggs at this scale, 100 birds, are not highly profitable, but they're providing us with so many other things that are enriching this project and bringing the farm full circle that it makes sense. Chickens are a really important part of a true regenerative farm and we're so excited for them to be here.